this past week um, I've been as an Amona have both been uh, reading through Ajahn Chah's um, teachings, talks the uh, books and uh, it's been an interesting kind of exercise to uh, uh, read the uh, well four different publications of, of Ajahn Chah's that have been done over the years to read them all in the space of a week um, kind of swimming in Ajahn Chah the last week and uh, it's been kind of fun um, Yesterday morning, the, uh, er, the up at my kuti, an uh, early morning sit. I was just uh, uh, things that I'd been reading and and uh, of course reflecting on and and uh, considering just kept coming up in in uh, in the meditation in practice and. Uh, I was finding myself up in my my kuti, just sort of my, my face all wet with tears, and and uh, just thinking of grat- with gratitude of Ajahn Chah, Ajahn Chah's teachings. So quite uh, just a lot of pity coming up. It was very quite wonderful. I, uh, but also just before evening puja, I finished the last book, and I feel quite happy to. P- put it down. That'll be uh, the... uh, But I thought I'd uh, sort of share... It's uh, one of the... I mean, it's been kind of nice to to do that, to read all these uh, talks of Ajahn Chah's, teachings of Ajahn Chah's. Um, it's also sort of a, a kind of a, an over stimulation or over bombardment uh, as well. So, uh, but I just thought I would would uh, maybe let things come up in my mind and and uh, uh, share what uh, what sticks in my mind. A lot of it just sort of this goes down the. Uh, um, it's like one of the I- similes that Ajahn Chah uses, images that Ajahn Chah uses, and is the image image of uh, the dam uh, building a uh, when you build a dam, you've got to build a, a spillway along with it. So if you don't have a have a a spillway uh, in your practice, then you uh, the dam breaks. Mm. To that uh, so a lot of stuff has been going down the spillway as well. It, uh, certainly, the uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, what the the way we the uh, the book 
is eventually going to be structured is in terms of sila samadhi panya, which is Ajahn Chah uh, comes back to those uh, fundamental teachings over and over again. There's hardly a talk really that he gives that, that doesn't address those aspects of, of uh, just the path. And uh, and I think in, in you know, both his teaching as well as his own practice, um, the, the kind of integration of the, the path and the inseparability of, of uh, the path um, was, uh, was something that he, he emphasized, you know, that uh, sila, samadhi, banya were not different things. Uh, they were, uh, or fundamentally different, uh, they were all aspects of a path of training, a path of a way of living, uh, a way of, of uh, uh, you know, penetrating truth uh, in the same way that, and he gives the, the image over and over again of the, say like of the, the mango uh, and in Thai, it, the, especially the, in Thai, the, uh, the, the image comes off really well because you actually have, he gives the image of that mango uh, when it's a, a bud, when it's a small fruit, when, it, when it's a green fruit, when it's a ripe fruit. And they actually have different names for each one. Uh, of, uh, mangoes are a, a big feature in hot season in, in Thailand. So. And they, you actually have you know, different names for each, each part of the, that process of the maturing of, a, of a, the mango. And, uh, and, and Ajahn Chah is saying that you know, the path is ex- essentially the same. And uh, we've got different names for it. Uh, but you know, it's all part of this path of truth. And uh, one part of it is sila, and one part of it is Part of the process is samadhi, another part of the process is is uh, is panya, and uh, but they're not separate. They work uh, work together. They function together. They have to. Uh, they're part and parcel of the whole uh, picture of truth. So that. Uh, in. Lumpur's keeping of, of uh, say, Siva, and he, both for the lay community as well as the monastics, he was, I mean, he was very uncompromising. There, was, there wasn't uh, excuses for not keeping precepts. There wasn't excuses for not being uh, you know, really uh, using the the training rules and the ways of of uh, restraint uh, for uh, our uh, our benefit, so that uh, you know, there was a there was a, a, a real integrity there, and he encouraged everybody to 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 use the the precepts, and in particular, the, uh, you know, one using the training precepts for uh, understanding how the, the mind works, un- understanding how intention works. Um, you keep the precepts uh, in order to uh, establish a standard that creates a certain amount of, of, of friction, uh, causes a bit of difficulty in your life, causes some, some resistance. That was in, in checking the, uh, the editing work that, uh, that Wisdom has done, Josh has done, uh, uh, and Ajahn Chah emphasizes this point, and, and uh, 
and there's this query and uh, and sort of a stroke through this, you know, the precepts keep you know, makes for makes for suffering or something and difficulty causes conflict and and, uh, and Josh is sort of says, just he can't have said this, this can't be true, is it? <laughs> it's like and uh, yes, this is true. It causes conflict. It causes it causes a sense of resistance in in the in the mind. If you're you know, if you're really going against desires and going against your habits and your conditioning, uh, there's going to be a sense of conflict in the mind. But then, that's what we learn from. Uh, that's what you investigate. That's what you use to understand. Uh, you know, what is the way out of suffering? Uh, because if we're if there's if there's no conflict, uh, then no, we're keeping our uh, sort of our desire mind and our opinions quite uh, well stoked and well uh, lubricated and, and uh, you know, nothing uh, gets in their way so that uh, ideally uh, the uh, you know, the keeping of the precept is a uh, you know it stops the flow of the of the, de- the desire mind and stops the flow of our, our habitual tendencies so that uh, we get an opportunity to look at that, watch that. And of course, Ajahn Chah said, this is a good thing. This is something that uh, uh, really does uh, help us to, to understand the nature of truth. And it's, that's the... Uh, uh, so right, right from the beginning of, of keeping precepts, it's being used as a tool and being used as a, as a, uh, a means of, of uh, yeah, penetrating truth so that the, uh, it isn't just um, kind of a perfunctory standards that you keep to, to uh, fulfill some obligation as, uh, in order to uh, to be a card-carrying Buddhist, uh, it's uh, uh, it's fundamental to the path, uh, or it's not something that you pick up and do uh, for uh, when you're a beginner, and then you can dispense with them uh, as you become more adept in the path and and. Uh, uh, they're not they're not relevant anymore and that's uh, it, it doesn't work that way they're they're part and parcel of the path of liberation or path of freedom so that keeping of of, uh, of sila <coughs> now the uh, There's wonderful images sometimes of, of the uh, uh, you know, why why do uh, it's like see the helping us to 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 establish ourselves in doing of that which is good and that which is wholesome and uh, it's like you know, he's giving he's saying that you know these people come and ordain and and then they they go out and uh, they want to want to leave the leave the monastery they want to go out and and uh, be out in the world and even they'll go you get all fired up to join the army and go off to the front and so they're 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 sort of they're happy to to uh, to do bad things, you know, so they're happy to die doing bad things. You know, so why aren't they happy, you know, just to you know, to stick with doing good things? So you know, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's this lovely lovely sort of image. You know, having that sense of his both chagrin and and. Uh, 
amazement at the human condition where you know, people will will uh, can uh, sacrifice all sorts of things to do to do the unwholesome, but to to stay within the, the bounds of the wholesome and the good. And, uh, it's uh, it's such a difficult and rare thing. In the training of the mind, and in in uh, the developing of, of samadhi, uh, Lumpa would would uh, again the sort of the integration of of um, the whole path uh, was was very uh, well, was a very was a key feature. So that sometimes his his uh, Uh, instructions in samadhi are frustratingly uh, sparse or uh, uh, seemingly uh, you know, so straightforward as to you know, not giving you much to work with. It's like, you know, sit down, watch your breath, uh, be attentive uh, to the breath going in, the breath go out, going out, breath will get more subtle, then it'll stop and you'll be in fourth jhana. You know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Did I miss something here? <laughs> so, so um, and that's what it's like. Then that's what it's like in Fort Jana, and that's where you really start. You things get really interesting. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, there are some of the the, the discourses where. Uh, and and talks where he, he does get a bit more detail, but a lot of the times it's it's uh, uh, there is a sort of uh, ordinariness um, to to his 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 teaching and the uh, but it's also again the sort of the integrated quality where it's it's not something separate from the whole training and uh, you know the you know some of the images that that, that stick uh, is uh, uh, the say the the image that that he gives of the of the spider, uh, which is, is sort of one of my favorite images with the uh, you know to in practicing dhamma. He says you know you have to um, practicing dhamma, practice meditation. You don't have to. Remember all that much, yes, or, or go very far and just look at a spider and see what a spider does. So a spider weaves its web, and and then uh, uh, sits in the center of, the, of its of its web. And he said, and then when a, an, an insect uh, or a fly comes along and and, and touches the the web uh, and gets in contact with the web, uh, with the, the stickiness of the web, then the spider rushes out and grabs that the insect and binds it up and, and brings it back to the center where it uh, eats it and consumes it. So he said it's like the, the web is like the the, the five senses, the external senses, the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body. And coming to the center is coming to the mind. Thus our mind should be, uh, you know, when we contact, when the senses contact, uh, you know, the sights con- contact the, 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 the eye, the sound contacts the, the ear, and this, the mind, Goes out to to, to uh, apprehend that, brings it back into the the mind, the heart, and then binds it with uh, the say anicca and dukkha seeing it, experiencing it with with mindfulness, and then the wisdom of of seeing its impermanence, its 
its own satisfactoriness. It's not not self. So that uh, you know, practice is is uh, is this wonderfully uh, sort of natural uh, has a ver- has a natural quality to it, uh, and uh, you know, and that is the uh, that we need to to uh, uh, cultivate that sense of, of being attentive to the to the to the senses, um, being mindful in it, and on each contact, uh, and drawing it into the heart so that it's uh, both seen clearly and then seen with right view, seen with 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 right. Uh, I've seen with truth, the truth of Dhamma, and that sense of uh, the, those those characteristics of truth, uh, of impermanence, of unsatisfactoriness, of non-self. There's not-self. These are the <coughs> ways in which we see the underlying uh, nature of things. I see their true nature, and thereby able to relinquish, to let go. And similarly, that that theme of of uh, uh, you know, developing the the uh, of that understanding of the senses and uh, uh, using the the senses as a means of, of uh, say, a means of liberation rather than seeing them as an obstruction. Uh, and this is what makes the mind peaceful, settled, or still. And it's not because we don't experience things, uh, but it's because we exp- experience them with mindfulness and wisdom that our minds can become settled, samadhi can be, can be uh, established. Um, it's not a, a, a shutting out. Uh, and that's, uh, yes, as Lumpa talks about that, and you see, you know, he's, you know, he struggled with meditation, he struggled with, with practice, and he tried all sorts of things. So you know, and I can still hear the, hear the, this one talk. Where it's in the it's in the uh, uh, food for the heart, uh, sense contact, uh, the one on sense contact. And he's talking about when he was a young monk and trying to learn how to meditate, and he'd get distracted all the time. And he was, uh, and it's, it's these external distractions are really what what is what is the problem. And, only I didn't have to be bothered by these external sounds. And in tropical countries, there's always something, something going on, um, even if it's just the insects. They say it's got some beeswax, uh, which is quite soft, and I rolled it up in balls and stuffed it in his ears, and shut out the, the external sounds so he could be peaceful. And of course, he said. He said all that. Then, of course, it was was there wasn't the external sounds, but there was this this sort of <laughs> humming, and it was I can remember a little Paul. It was this, you couldn't couldn't hear anything outside, but there was still this this sound was bothering me. <laughs> 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 uh, that's not wasn't the the sound that was a problem. It was the mind that was was holding it. Now that, uh, and Lung Paul gives another image of of that uh, understanding the the uh, 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 understanding the senses and sense contact in order to to be to be truly peaceful. The uh, is in the. Uh, the talk on Tuchopotila, uh, where the Tuchopotila uh, is this uh, 
uh, very learned uh, monk who has many, many disciples, and then he realizes, and then is uh, criticized by the Buddha being, uh, say, knowledgeable but not practicing. So he goes to find a teacher, and of course, uh, he's, go he's so well known, so respected, has so many disciples that nobody was willing to teach him. Finally, he found this novice who was willing to teach him. Who was novice was an arahant, and uh, uh, the novice's uh, instruction to him was to uh, using the the image of of uh, catching a uh, a lizard that goes into a, a termite mound. And so then, in the termite mound. Six holes or six entrances and ex exits, and you know, the way that one catches the the lizard is, is to to plug up the because termite mounds are quite large or can be quite large, so it could be just about anywhere. So to plug up the five of the the entrances and then to be vigilant and Stay watching at the at that last that last exit that last entry point the last hole so that the uh, so that guarding the senses of eye ears nose tongue and body uh, it's sort of to be very restrained in those to sort of cut those off to be. Uh, uh, Sort of not getting engaged uh, in those and put the attention on the mind so that whatever uh, one experiences, it's one experiences it at the mind uh, and one apprehends uh, more clearly the, say, the culprit, uh, where the problems are being created. So that that uh, that sense of of really bringing all the attention back to the mind, uh, one's observant of the senses, but using restraint and a, a cutting a cutting off in the sense of uh, not uh, getting. Uh, infatuated with the the uh, uh, the whole realm of of whether what one sees, hears, smells, tastes, touches is uh, is pleasant or unpleasant, whether it's agreeable or disagreeable, whether it's wanted or not wanted, whether one likes it or dislikes it. Uh, but coming back to the to the mind and where 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 that is experienced, where those reactions are. Created and formed and proliferated on. So that the um, that image of coming back to the the center, coming back to the base, coming back to the one place where everything comes and goes. Uh, and this is a, you know really the uh, the way of establishing. Uh, Stability within the, within the mind, within the heart, establishing samadhi, the uh, the firm uh, firmness of the mind, uh, stability of the mind. One of the things that struck me uh, in Lumpur's um, instructions on developing samadhi. Um, he, he almost invariably uses uh, mindfulness of breathing as the, as the base, um, but then he um, will emphasize a lot on the reflections on the body, um, reflections on, on establishing um, The uh, 
You know, those are the two, you know, in terms of meditation objects, those are really the two main, main objects. But when he, when he says, you know, like holding you know, the, uh, the context of the, of the object, whatever object one uses, or, you know, what to, you know, what do we, what do we hold, what do we fix the mind on? And uh, he said, you know, he said, one needs to fix the mind on a point of balance. Okay? So that, uh, you know, whatever meditation object one is using, or whatever reflection, because there's many reflections, investigations, contemplations that, that Lumpa himself used and, and, and constantly refers to uh, in the meditation. Uh, but w- what is important to uh, like to establish the mind on, or fix the mind on, or try to hold the mind is this point of balance. Uh, and I think that's a really important aspect of, of say, of Lumpur's teaching. And that the you know, how do we uh, hold the, the the mind in a place of balance? Because um, I think Lopo himself uh, was so uh, gung ho uh, and um, you know that he would a- and had so much resolve that sometimes he could be uh, he could he could be out of you know, really out of balance uh, and I think that's the same for all of us, in, you know, for various reasons. I mean, Lepaul, some I think, was sometimes his his extraordinary resoluteness and det- and, and determination, but also he was extraordinarily kind of passionate and strong desires. So that and that, of course, uh, he experienced many very strong moods. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, consequently, the the uh, you know the mind would would swing. So that you know, he certainly, um, you know, the, seeing the, the the value, importance, necessity of holding a place of balance uh, within the heart, uh, and and actually bringing that up quite consciously. You know, how do how do we create a sense of balance? Um, and uh, for all the you know, and all the different ways that one trains, and the ways that one pushes, and the ways that one investigates, uh, you know, the point of balance is always a point of letting go, uh, the point of not clinging. Um, and of course, that is that is really the uh, kind of a, you know, an essential part of, of Lumpur's teaching uh, is that that the emphasis on on letting go. On and as I I read the other night uh, uh, about abandonment, you know, it just comes up over and, and over and over again. And that says, you know, in terms of a, a kind of a a wisdom teaching uh, that wisdom of letting go of n- not binding oneself to um, the kind of mechanics of of uh, and dynamics of 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 sen- the sense realm and the sense desires. Uh, not getting uh, bound to the uh, opinion-making realm that the mind so easily throws out the whole sense of self. Uh, how we, you know, the the uh, the relinquishing and letting go of our uh, kind of 
imaginations of self, how we create a sense of I out of everything. Uh, so that, that point of non-clinging, um, relinquishment, of letting go, it just comes up over and over and over again and seeing that that we, and that's where the investigations and, and meditations on impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, not self, Four Noble Truths, uh, these sort of kind of meat and potatoes uh, practices, they, they're fundamental basics uh, that are, are, are common, ordinary, and, uh, but they have very profound uh, results when one is assiduous in applying them. Uh, if one really brings them up into the heart and, and really holds them with awareness and clarity and, and uh, clear comprehension, uh, and then to let them go. So that um, and that there really isn't an alternative to to letting go and relinquishing, because everything else is suffering. Uh, to hold things in a way that uh, increases desire, increases opinions, e increases uh, our sense of self uh, on the I position, is just more suffering. And why would you do it? Why would anybody do it? Um, and it's sort of, when one reads Ajahn, Ajahn Chah's teachings, it's just it's a, right, and it's sort of so clear. Uh, and then one puts it down and gets into some cloud of delusion again. <laughs> uh, but it, uh, you know, to hear it coming from such a clear place uh, reminds one that that is, you know, really is possible, and it's possible for everybody. That, that, that uh, um, bringing those those uh, those those teachings up and and really applying them, using them in the meditation. Uh, when one gets up from the meditation, to to carry them with one, to call, to to apply them, uh, to not drop the uh, those uh, applications of. Uh, mindfulness and clear comprehension and reflection and investigation uh, uh, to not uh, yeah, to not let them drop away but to carry carry them with one uh, in, in all postures in all situations and you start real you start seeing them the mind revolving around them more and more and that's where the where uh, I think one of the the elements that that uh, of Lumpur's teaching that uh, comes up in uh, so many different situations is the uh, uh, where Lumpur sees very clearly the that relationship between the, the conventional and the transcendent. Uh, in in Thai, it's a, it's samut and vimut, uh, and uh, samut is sort of the whole realm of of convention, determined reality, uh, how we suppose things to be uh, in just ordinary idiom. You, if you if you sort of say samut, why wow, sort of suppose it was like this. And and that's sort of a, a support, you know, a, a suppositions that we 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 create around the conventional realm of of uh, a being, a, a, a world, and, uh, good and evil, um, happiness and suffering. These are all sort of created things that that uh, are formed out of the conventional realm, and we keep reacting to them. We keep uh, tinkering with them, we keep, keep uh, being fascinated by them, we're aghast by them, uh, 
we uh, consider them to be me and mine, uh, and of course they're uh, constantly uh, creating problems for us. Whereas the whole realm of vimut is, or vimuti in, in Pali uh, is liberation, is freedom. And by seeing through, by penetrating, and by relinquishing the whole realm of the, of the conventional and the, 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 the supposed and determined elements of, of existence, uh, we can live in, experience, uh, penetrate the, the realm of the transcendent. And that's something that we can do uh, in the present moment, uh, in uh, the... Uh, it, it's, it's because of our experience and seeing clearly of the, uh, uh, of the conventional realm that we can experience that we ex- uh, can experience the, the transcendent. Uh, uh, it's not that one uh, destroys the uh, conventional realm, it no longer exists and we can just dwell in